Realme launched the Realme 7 and 7 Pro recently, replacing their older Realme 6 series. And today, I will be talking about the cheaper Realme 7. Since these devices launched only 6 months apart, there does not seem to be that much of an upgrade really. But is the Realme 7 a good value for the price it's asking? Well, let's find that out in this review. If nothing else, the company has definitely improved the design on the Realme 7 as compared to its predecessor. I like this new design language and the camera module too. Although the back of the phone has a matte finish, it still attracts a lot of smudges so make sure you use the silicone cover that comes inside the box. Now getting to the ergonomics, Realme 7's plastic build is not that heavy and the phone is comfortable to hold as well so everything is good on that part. On the right side, you get a side-mounted fingerprint sensor that works flawlessly as long as your finger is not wet or greasy. Then again, that's a problem with every physical sensor, I guess. But even though the phone looks good and everything, I don't think it is particularly well-built because there's a little creaking on this side of the design, and this is how it sounds. I don't know if this is a manufacturing defect or something, but it's there and it cannot go unnoticed. And if I remember correctly, the same problem was there in the Realme 5 series as well. Additionally, what I've noticed is that such quality control issues only occur in units that we buy from India. So if you are someone watching from India, be sure to check for such things before you buy this device or any other Realme phones for that matter. Anyways, let's get to the display. And it's no secret that the best thing about it is certainly the fact that it has a smooth 90Hz screen. Apart from that, this 6.5 inches IPS LCD FHD Plus panel has good colors, sufficient brightness, and viewing angles. Again, the colors are not as vibrant as AMOLED screens, but this one's a good LCD panel. Other than that, the Realme 7 only has Gorilla Glass 3 protecting it, so be sure not to drop it, or better yet, use a good screen protector. Also, I am slightly disappointed at the fact that I have faced occasional screen flickering issues on this display. At first, once again, I thought that it was a defect on my unit, but then I read the community forums to find out that there were many other people who are facing the same issue. I think this is something that can be solved with a software update, so I hope that Realme pushes one very soon. But then again, this thing has hindered my smartphone experience, so I thought that you guys should know this. Alright, moving on to the performance, the Realme 7 comes bearing the newest MediaTek's Helio G95 chipset, which is built on a 12nm architecture just like its predecessor, the G90T. In fact, it's the first phone to feature this gaming-centric silicon. Here, the Helio G90T and the G95 are basically the same except for a few improvements on the latter. The G95 has a 5% better GPU performance than that of the G90T. As a result, you will get better Antutu scores and other GPU-centric benchmarks on the Realme 7. In real-life usage though, that 5% GPU improvement is barely noticeable. But what I can say is that this phone performs really well. During the entirety of my time with this phone, I haven't faced any major problem with how it performed. Multitasking and app opening is considerably fast and normal tasks run like a breeze too. So the performance aspect of the Realme 7 is a thumbs up for me. When it comes to gaming, you can get a considerably smooth 40 to 45 FPS in PUBG Mobile with settings set to smooth graphics and ultra frame rates. With balanced frame rates, on the other hand, you would probably want to scale down the graphics to HD for smoother gameplay. Similarly, games like Asphalt 9, Call of Duty, etc. have no problems running smoothly whatsoever. In terms of thermals, well, with around 5 continuous games of PUBG Mobile, this phone reaches around 40 degrees Celsius, so I have to say that this phone definitely heats up a little when pushing it to the edge. On the other hand, light gaming is not going to affect Realme 7's temperature at all. By the way, the unit I have with me has 8GB of RAM and 128GB storage, but you can opt for the 664GB model as well, if 64GB storage is enough for you. Software-wise, here you are greeted with the Realme UI 1.0 on top of Android 10. And as much as some aspects of the Realme UI look different over Oppo's Color OS, you can't help but notice that it's just another repackaged version of the Color OS. Talking about the experience, well, it's basically the same as the Realme 6. 
But sadly, Realme has started pushing ads in its UI just like Xiaomi, and I've had a couple of instances of ad encounters while downloading apps from the Play Store. Other than that, I haven't come across any other kinds of ads on the Realme 7, at least till now. So as things stand, the situation here is not as bad as some non-flagship Xiaomi phones. Thankfully, if you don't want to face any ads on your Realme smartphone, as you should, you do have an option to turn it off altogether. In terms of updates, I just received the August security patch on the Realme 7 while I was filming this video, and it's already the month of October, so I just wish that these updates could be a little faster. Now let's talk about the cameras, and with the Realme 7 cameras, what I was eager to check was number one, how much of an upgrade is there from the Realme 6 to the Realme 7, and number two, how does the Realme 7 cameras fare against the Realme 7 Pro considering they both use the same Sony IMX682 sensor. And after my time with these three phones, I have accumulated quite the findings, but before that, let's check out some images from the Realme 7. As evident from these pictures, the primary 16 megapixel pixel bint images have pleasing colors, good details, and acceptable dynamic range. On the other hand, the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle images struggle with the dynamic range with average details and look dark overall. The macro lens, as usual, is of very little use considering its quality. Getting to the portrait images, they are average, especially in terms of edge detection and background colors. Likewise, nighttime images in instances of very less ambient light are subpar with grains and muddiness here and there. The night mode feature rectifies the lack of detail and exposure management by a great bit, but you know the drill, it takes around 5 seconds to process the shot. Videos on the Realme 7 are good enough for casual recording. Cranking up the resolution to 4K 30fps, you can get good visuals, but the stabilization is a big swing and a miss. The same is the case with the 1080p 60fps videos. As a result, you can get decent stabilization only in 1080p 30fps videos, so if you're not using a gimbal, I would suggest you shoot in that resolution for stable footages. Now let's get into how much improvement there is from the Realme 6 to Realme 7 cameras. And after testing these phones extensively, I found very few differences among them, which came as a surprise to me considering the Realme 7 has a much superior camera sensor on paper. The only difference I found out was that the Realme 7's images are a little warmer with slightly better sharpness and that's about it. Selfies, including portrait selfies, share the same fate. There is a slightly prominent red tint in the Realme 7 selfies, but other aspects look exactly alike. For normal portraits, the Realme 7 has better subject details, as Realme 6 makes the subject smoother. Otherwise, it's hard to differentiate between these images. Similarly, nighttime images from the Realme 7 have ever so slightly better details, but nothing that would make any of them stand out. Likewise, as I mentioned earlier, I also compared the cameras of the Realme 7 with the more expensive Realme 7 Pro, and found out that the latter has a better dynamic range in its images because of which it is able to produce better colors in many instances. And even while focusing, the Realme 7 sometimes struggles to lock focus in small objects while the Realme 7 Pro does it much faster. Apart from that, selfies on the Realme 7 Pro have better HDR and color reproduction, and even nighttime images look slightly superior with better colors, but details and everything look similar. Overall, I am slightly disappointed with what I had expected from the Realme 7's cameras as it does not offer a significant improvement over the last generation Realme 6, which would mean that the Realme 7 cannot compete against the likes of the Galaxy M31 too, as it had a much better camera performance than the Realme 6. For the battery, you get a sizable upgrade on the Realme 7 with its 5000mAh cell as compared to the 4300 one on the Realme 6. And I have to applaud the battery endurance on the Realme 7 as well because it took me an entire day to drain the battery on normal to medium usage. In terms of charging, yes, you don't get super fast 65 watt support like the Realme 7 Pro, but I think its 30 watt fast charging is sufficiently fast enough for many. It is capable of taking your phone from 0 to 100% in about an hour, so for me, the battery side of things on the Realme 7 looks good. When it comes to the speakers, you don't get a stereo speaker like you get on the Realme 7 Pro, and the audio quality from the Realme 7 is strictly average. 
Anyways, before moving on to the verdict about this phone, a huge shout out to our sponsor of this video, EaseUS Mobi Mover. EaseUS Mobi Mover is a data transfer tool that helps you transfer data from your iPhone or iPad to your computer or another device and vice versa. It's a simple and effective tool which requires only three steps for the data transfer process. You just have to select and connect the devices, select files you want to transfer, and finally you have to simply click transfer. It is as easy as that. With this, you can also manage your data and download videos. Further, with its technician version, you can unlock iOS screens without a password if you have forgotten the passcode or reset your iPhone altogether. One software with so many quirks. Interesting, isn't it? So, iPhone users, if you need a one-stop solution to iOS problems, downloading this software will help you ease your misery. For further information, you can check the link given in the description below. The Realme 7 is a good phone, there's no doubts on that. But it is also equally true that it is only an incremental upgrade over its predecessor. Actually, its cameras could have been the thing that could stand out, especially with the new Sony sensor, but that's not the case either. Still, I think the Realme 7 is a good contender for the price it comes for. Having said that, there are some things that I wish Realme improves in the next generation of this device, like build quality, which was questionable on the Realme 5 and it's the same on the Realme 7 as well. Also, a proper quality control would ensure that people don't suffer from display flickering issues like I have been facing on my unit. So that was all about the Realme 7 from me. Which do you think is the best budget phone of 2020? Do let us know in the comments below and subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon if you haven't already. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I'll see you in the next one.